Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to the episode of the Mission Matters Fitness Podcast, your source for all things fitness. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I have Blake Shepard on the line. He's a fitness director and exercise physiologist over at Cambridge Fitness of Wilmington. Blake, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys about uh, active aging and our optimal living program we've got going on at Cambridge Fitness in Wilmington, North Carolina. So, Blake, uh, excited to get into this with you. Um, and before we do talk about, um, you know, functional aging and what that looks like, uh, let's get a little bit further in your background. So how did you get started really in your career and in fitness? Well, Adam, you know, I started my career. Um, well, as a kid, I was a gymnast. I competed for about 15 years uh, as a competitive gymnast uh, and just learning the body and understanding uh, how you can train the body and doing different things. Um, throughout my career as a gymnast, you know, I accrued a few injuries, so um, I had to kind of go into rehab a few times with shoulders, knees, back injuries, and so it really kind of fascinated me to, you know, go and get an exercise physiology degree. Uh, then I started working at a physical therapy clinic, shadowing different therapists, and really enjoying the rehabilitation side, uh, and then I kind of just got more involved into the older adults. I uh, I saw a, a really a seamless transition between uh, once an individual may need some um, exercise education on how to better themselves after an injury or maybe just from you know, a sedentary lifestyle, um, how we can kind of convert that and transition them into an exercise routine. Man, that's awesome. Um, I think that's great. And let's, uh, I think it's a great transition too. So let's uh, dive into today's topic. So functional aging, I mean, I know you have a program. Let's just get right into that. So so where do you want to start this topic? This is a big deal. Yeah, you know, so as a functional aging specialist, I, I really like to start with an assessment and an orientation. Uh, this is a good opportunity for me to build rapport between myself and the client, but also, you know, you really want to prioritize an individual's goals. Um, you're trying to figure out what that client is really interested in achieving. So that'll help me in programming exactly, you know, how far out we're looking. You know, are they, you know, setting a goal to run a 5K in three months? Or are they really just trying to live a more comfortable lifestyle? Uh, so First off, we kind of talk through what kind of limitations or deficiencies does that person currently deal with um, or maybe they've had a history of. So it can be things as simple as, you know, I rolled my ankle five years ago or, you know, I have this heart trouble or, you know, sometimes I get asthma and things like that. Um, so really kind of highlighting these deficiencies will help me in programming them exactly what they need to be doing. So, and I know this is going to change from um, from individual to individual, health level, you know, fitness level, all these things change. But I do know that, you know, working with people as long as you have in this particular um, niche, if you will, of functional aging, that sometimes there's some common themes that tend to repeat themselves over and over and over again. Where do you find a lot of a lot of individuals kind of make these make mistakes or what kind or opportunity areas, if you will, as they kind of get further along in age? What is what's some of that low hanging fruit, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, great great point. So there is usually some common variables that everybody can kind of um, work towards, and that's really what I'm going to highlight on today. Um, orthopedically, typically the knees, the back, the hips, 
things like that are common areas of the body that take over stresses through just general life. Or it could just be, you know, improper posture or, you know, certain work that we do kind of puts extra stress on those joints. Um, but ultimately, in the very beginning, we want to make sure the body um, is in good alignment and it has a balance between strength on left and right side. Um, and the word balance will continue to come back over and over again. You know, whenever I'm working with a new client, we're asking, okay, what kind of goals do you have? What kind of things have you seen change in the last three or four years? And typically they always mention, hey, listen, like my balance is not quite where it used to be. You know, I used to be able to do this or that, and I really want to be better because I know if I take a fall and I have another injury, it could really set me back. So what do I need to be doing to, you know, better my balance? And ultimately, it's posture and strength and just functional movements to just get the body in tune. So I'd really like to dive deep into exactly, you know, five major components to helping somebody and getting them um, back on track with their exercise routines. So what what are some of those components? So uh, first off, you got musculoskeletal, and that's just dealing with your body's strength, uh, your ability to have speed and power, um, also just general endurance and stamina through those muscles, um, and then joint integrity. We want to be very stable, um, but we also need to be able to move in a full range of motion. So, you know, everybody knows that exercise, you're going to gain strength. You know, you're working with weight, so maybe your own body weight. Um, you're loading the body in different ways to help build strength. What a lot of people don't realize is that the, the importance of doing speed and power work really helps the brain, and that's kind of where we get into neuromuscular health. So doing things that challenge your coordination or your reaction time and motor control, um, things like proprioception, that's your ability to kind of know where your body is in space without looking at it. Um, and that really helps with your overall balance and just your body's ability to function when you want it to. Um, the next uh, component is dealing with balance. So you know, your postural strategies, where are your, where's your alignment through your shoulders to your hips, um, understanding where your center of gravity is, um, and then challenging those things with kind of multi-sensory. So maybe changing how your visual perceptive of something or your vestibular system in your inner ear and how um, different movements will challenge your balance. Um, now, two really strict characteristics of balance is uh, static balance versus dynamic balance. Static balance, you're going to be trying to like stand still. So when most people come to me and they ask me, hey man, my balance has really gotten pretty bad the past couple of years. What do I need mm -hmm. to be doing? Well, I'm like, well, what kind of balance are you talking about? Are you tripping up when you're walking or are you just talking about standing on one foot for a minute? And typically their mind is thinking balance is really more static. Uh, well, really, if we are a little bit more dynamic when we train, so maybe, you know, creating an obstacle course and stepping over objects or, you know, standing on different pads that may, uh, like, change the way their foot alignment is, those types of things really help strengthen their balance. Um, another real general cardiorespiratory or cardiovascular type endurance. Uh, and most people know that as being more aerobic, so long duration type exercise. You're walking on a treadmill for 30 minutes. You're riding a bike for 15 or 20 minutes. Um, you're swimming and things like that. And that. That's all very, very important for your heart to be able to circulate blood around your body. But also anaerobic um, cardiorespiratory health is also good. And that's more of like short bursts, being able to exert yourself uh, high intensity for you know, a short amount of time to really help your heart in conditioning a little bit further. Um, sometimes with older adults in our facility, we have an indoor pool, so we do some water aerobics, and the water is a very safe place to do some aerobic activity because we can do some short bursts of activity 
um, and really push the individual in a safe manner, uh, but they can really exert themselves and then allow their body to come back to rest, and then we can go another round and really, you know, get after it. The last one I want to touch on is your mobility. Um, flexibility and stretching uh, is just so crucial in your body's ability to age and function properly. Um, even with, you know, our 20s, 30s, 40-year-olds that are still highly active in gyms or as triathletes and things like that, they do take the time to really focus on the stretching and the flexibility, especially of the posterior chain in the lower body. Um, people are exerting themselves every day sometimes in training, getting ready for races and different different competitions or just really pushing themselves for fitness and health. And they just maybe take maybe three to five minutes at the end of their workout to kind of move around and stretch out the hamstrings or the shoulders a little bit. Uh, but mobility is pretty crucial when uh, an individual gets into, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. Things start to tighten up and the stresses that they've endured over the years are really starting to set in. And so mobility is the, the fifth component that we really focus on. And that's awesome, Blake. And, uh, what I love about it is it's very, it's very systematic. So you've, you've obviously, you're obviously a professional in your, in your field and what you're doing. And I can see, you know, how people under your care benefit, um, as they go through and you're, and you're, and you're looking at all these five areas and creating these programs. Um, so that being said, so Blake, um, final question, a two part question. So if somebody's listening to this and they want to follow you or they want to learn more about, um, about, um, about Cambridge Fitness of Wilmington. I mean, how do they connect overall and like talk about geographies, things like that, about where they can where they can even see your work? Yeah, so uh, we actually have a few facilities throughout um, North Carolina. So um, we've got a site in um, Apex, North Carolina, which is right outside of Raleigh. Um, we're building a second facility there currently. It's going to be just amazing, state of the art in the Briar Creek area, right by the airport. Um, I'm personally located in Wilmington, North Carolina, um, but you can check us out on Facebook and YouTube, um, or we have our own um, uh, website, and it's CambridgeFitnessWilmington.com, um, and that is going for your, you know, website, your Facebook, and your YouTube, Cambridge Fitness Wilmington. Fantastic. Well, Blake, uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great stuff that you're doing. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Fitness, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Blake, thanks again for coming to the show. Hey, Adam, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed um, educating your listeners on the importance of a well-rounded exercise routine. Hopefully they can take that knowledge and really uh, create a very physical independence and overall functionality life.